We have team coverage of tonight's flooding across the area. Ten on your sides, Matt Gregory is in Norfolk. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm Deanna LeBlanc. We are dealing with a soggy Saturday, to say the least, across Hampton Roads. And we are not done with the nasty conditions yet. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Deanna LeBlanc. We have a lot to get to with tonight's weather. And as expected, the tides caused the waters to rise up in the typical spots. But this time, a little bit more than we usually see. The water is now receding after flooding a number of streets on the peninsula tonight. We have team coverage of tonight's flooding. We have 10 on your sides, Matt Gregory in Norfolk and Jason Marks is on the peninsula from Pocos and we'll get to them in just a minute. But first, let's head to the Super Doppler 10 Weather Center. That's where Chief Meteorologist Don Slater and Meteorologist Ashley Baylor have been tracking the conditions all night. Don, what's the latest? The latest is that conditions are improving. As you mentioned, the tides <clears throat> pardon me, are receding throughout the area. We're going to see them come back on up again. That's what we're going to talk about here in just a second. We're going to cover the immediate situation. We are seeing scattered rainfall into the area, but uh, not all that much right now into the Hampton Road cities. We have seen a steady rain. It's created anywhere between around a half an inch all the way on up to an inch into the Hampton Road cities. A little bit more in Wakefield and quite a bit more into parts of North Carolina, but quite a bit less in places as well. So it's been very, very uneven as far as the rainfall we've received through the area. But everybody's gotten some of that rainfall, that spritzy light rain, but it's been very, very continuous and blown by the wind. You can see winds are still up there near the coastline, 20 miles an hour, 18 miles an hour in Virginia Beach. It's not quite as strong as it was a little bit earlier on. Uh, and the wind gusts, this dead on winds around 18, 20 mile an hour winds, steady, but they pop on up to these speeds every now and then. 20 6, 28, 29 miles an hour, and they were at around 30, 32 miles an hour th earlier. Uh, so again, that's dropped off just, just slightly. And you can see again, they're nothing into the uh, 30 mile an hour range except uh, for the Chincoteague area with 29 miles an hour for right now. Now we're going to show you what's going on with the wind because obviously the wind has a great deal to do uh, with that northeast wind. Uh, that has a great deal to do with the, those tides coming up and the fact that it's a full moon tomorrow night. Uh, you'll notice that by tomorrow morning it drops off a little bit, but it's still rather breezy. 21, 26 miles an hour, so we could safely see wind gusts to around 30, 35 tomorrow morning. But by the end of the day tomorrow, the winds aren't as bad. 16, 24, so uh, again, they're going to gradually, gradually drop on down throughout the area, throughout the region and the coastline. Now, here's where we were Friday morning. Here's where we were Friday evening, yesterday evening. There's where we were this morning, 4.82, and there's where we were this evening, 5.24. But tomorrow morning, it's not going to drop all that much at 5.17. So it'll be really, really close to the same. And in fact, could be a little bit higher uh, in some areas. We'll tell you about that. I'll be coming up with the forecast in a few minutes. Okay, now let's get to our team coverage from our crews out in the field. Let's start with 10 on your signs, Matt Gregory in Norfolk. Now, Matt, you found lots of issues in parts of the city during your travels. Yeah, Deanna, all throughout the city, we found folks today who said they're used to flooding this time of year, especially from the tides. But what we noticed was over the course of just a few hours, roads just like this one, Gray Street in Norfolk, ended up becoming impassable. Around 5 o'clock, the roads by the Hague had signs up indicating while passable now, in the next few hours, a shallow river would roll across the roadways. Two hours later, you could see what a difference the tide made. Keep in mind, this part of Norfolk only saw light rain, which meant no effect on the flooding. As the tide rose over Gray Street, some folks still tried to get through. And by high tide, we found a neighborhood near Llewellyn and Delaware blocked off by water. Earlier, a few cars stalled out in this area. In the Largemont section of the city, we saw more of the deepest flooding. One man told me he measured more than two feet of water in certain areas. While we walked through the neighborhood, most people said they expect this amount of water every year around this time. The middle of the street flooded out and some folks had standing water in their yards. Many of the homes in this area already sit higher up, which neighbors say makes the flood bearable. Yeah, just a mild inconvenience, but our house is elevated up about 10 feet, so that's that's part of the reason why it's not a problem. If we had lived down there and the house hadn't been raised, that'd probably be a different story. Now, Deanna, the floodwaters have just begun to recede here in the last couple of uh, half hours. So, in fact, the water was up to here at around 10 o'clock, this sign right here. But as you can see, since then, it's receded well back towards the Hague. And um, they expect that to actually come back up as high tide comes again tomorrow morning. In Norfolk, Matt Gregory, 10 on your side. Matt, thank you. Now let's switch to the peninsula and 10 on your side's Jason Marks. He's in Pocosin. Now, Jason, the tide came up quickly and it was pretty deep in some places there tonight. 
Yeah, absolutely. It came up fast, started around 6 o'clock tonight, and high tide here was in Pocosin was around 8 of 58. So obviously came up quick, and when it came up, it covered roads like this one. You can see this, it's still got a lot of water. Looks like it's about ankle deep, starting to go down. We've seen uh, everything go down. Let me show you, though, what things look like really close to high tide. This is Little Florida Road here, the main street in Pocosin, and you can see the water coming up. Now, Little Florida Road did have a lot of water on it. The water coming from the uh, back river, which is right next to the Chesapeake Bay, and everything was really blowing into Pocosin. But people around here are used to this. The homes were raised after Isabel, uh, so a lot of the homes are no longer on the ground. Many of the residents... Typical Pocosin weather. If it gets a bad rain for four or five days, it it floods like this, you know, the ditches. I mean, on a normal tide, the ditches are already flooded. So, so with that said, what's the big concern? Is Just there a concern? The, I mean, it is, and then, you know, it isn't. But, I mean, people towards, like, you know, the point down at Messick here, Ridge, you know, they got their property damaged and stuff like that, you know, because the water comes up over and it goes underneath their houses. That's 10 on your side. It's Jason Marks reporting. Now, Jason says most of the homes in Pocosin were lifted up off the ground after Hurricane Isabel. Now, as Matt and Jason mentioned, the water is going back down. It is receding, but it will come back up tomorrow morning. So we're going to keep an eye on that for you throughout the night and into tomorrow as well. Now, in Portsmouth, the usual spots also flooded, including right outside our station. We affectionately call it Lake Wavy, but it does cause some issues. You can see the water got out onto Court Street right next to our station, blocking some of the lanes of the road. Fortunately, it's not too busy here on the weekends. Some problems on the outer banks from this storm. Parts of NC-12 had to be shut down because of the water. We got some pictures from Ocracoke of the water covering the road. The Hatteras Ocracoke Ferry was also shut down. Now, we've been watching this situation along 12 all week. Now, further to the north near Kitty Hawk, sandbags were staged between the waves and the road. We've not heard of any issues from that part of Dare County. Also on the Outer Banks, this video of the waves from Jim Ludings, a good reason for those homes to be raised. The ocean washed right under them, as expected, with minimal damage. Now let's go live to Virginia Beach and a webcam view from the Norwegian Lady. The statue on 25th Street Boardwalk is looking a little foggy there. The winds have been whipping up all day. You can see there's not a single person out on that boardwalk. Well, the weather caused big changes for the Neptune Festival this year. Much of the activity was forced inside. Ten on your side was at the Virginia Beach Convention Center, down the street where the arts and crafts vendors took shelter from the elements. They'll be back out there tomorrow. The sand sculpting part of this year's festival continued on the beach, but under a tent.